Hi there, I'm Tutsi. I make little Bundes cloth diapers and today I'm going to show you how to serge nice looking inserts um, for your cloth diapers. Today I'm making inserts for my all-in-two diapers. So it is a rounded contoured insert and you'll see that here's my pattern and the first thing I do is cut out my pieces about a half inch bigger than my pattern. And then I use my disappearing ink marker to trace the pattern. You could certainly do this step first, but this ink disappears within 24 hours, even if you don't wash it, which is why it's called disappearing ink. And oftentimes there are days in between when I cut and when I can sew. And I don't want to have to retrace the line twice. So when I cut, I just kind of freehand it because it doesn't really matter since I'm leaving that extra space. And then when I go to actually sew is when I do my nice line. So there you go, you can see that light purple line. And I am making just the doublers, so I have one layer of heavy bamboo fleece and this yellowish one is hemp fleece. And then I'm going to come over here to my serger. If you are at all interested in selling your cloth diapers, I highly recommend a serger. This is what it looks like. So it's very different than a sewing machine. It uses four um, four threads and it has two needles. So two of the threads go to the needles and then two of the threads go through here to what's called the loopers. And in my opinion the secret to having a really nice looking serge is number one to leave that extra so that you have something to cut off. When I first started I would try to serge right on the edge of my fabric and not have anything cut off because I didn't want to waste anything. Well, I ended up with threads that were off the fabric and fabric that wasn't caught by the threads and I'd have to go back and do it again and it looked terrible. I learned that a half inch of waste is worth it. So you lift your presser foot up and I always set mine so that my little cutting knife is up so that I can fit my fabric underneath and then lower. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to completely ignore the needles. My goal as I am surging is to have this knife cutting exactly on the purple line that I made. That's the only thing I'm paying attention to. So here we go. I use my whole hand to guide the top and then my fingers to guide this part. And now I'm getting to where I'm going to turn the corner. And so I've got both hands on deck and I'm going to gently turn the fabric. You're not going to pull the fabric in any way. In fact, I'm going to push the fabric into the curve so that I don't have threads coming off the edge of the fabric. And again, I'm only watching the knife and the line. I am not watching the needles at all. I also don't rush it. So there you go, you can see our nice result. Surging is not a speed sport. The machine goes fast enough as it is. You don't need to rush it along. I'm going to do the curve again. So again, I'm going to push the fabric into the curve. Okay. 
and now I've gotten to where I started and I'm just gonna sew right over it and now my fabric is not touching the knife at all and I'm gonna sew just a little bit to lock those first stitches down and then I yank it out quickly now here is where I get a little unorthodox because a lot of people will take this tail and do some complicated thing where they thread it under and some other hoopla and and that's great and that's how the books tell you to do it but I'm lazy and when I first got my serger a little over a year ago I didn't know about those tricks so all I did was just cut it right at the end and find the strings and pull them pull them real tight and then cut them off and I didn't know that this was the wrong way to do it I just did it because that's what seemed right in my head and you know what I have been using the same inserts that I surged over a year ago and they have not come undone or frayed or anything at all so I just kind of keep doing it that way because it works for me even though it is a little bit unorthodox so there you go you've got your beautifully surged insert it looks really nice and professional and my last tip for you regarding surging is if you want to add some color to your surging but don't feel like buying four cones of a new color don't you really only need one color so when I am doing colored surging all I do is change this one the upper looper and I put a color there and the result will be something like this this is an insert I made the other day with um, a variegated thread so it's one color one spool of thread that changes color but all I did was change the upper looper so you'll see that my two needles are still white and then the loop is colored and then underneath my lower loop thread is still white so you can add a little color to your projects by only changing one color happy surging